Hey folks, welcome. This is Bear, coming to you from Sedona, Arizona. Episode 1 today is going to be talking about what is cognitive awareness. Essentially, the series is cognitive awareness and healing from it, getting ourselves to understand it, because you can't get through something or heal from something if you don't understand what that something is. So what we're going to do is try and introduce you to the concepts behind cognitive awareness. So cognitive awareness is basically being more aware and alert of what your thoughts bring you. Our thoughts are driven by our belief system, but our thoughts create who we are and what we do. There's a lot of things going on inside the brain, the synapse, the electric energy that springs to life, these functions in our brain that create this concept called thought. Through the science of thinking, we come to understand that there's a lot more going on inside our brain than we think. There's a lot more activity that happens with every thought, with every presentation of words. We can have thoughts, but until we learn and understand what words mean, our thoughts are kind of bland and undefined. As humans, we, we choose to define just about everything we encounter. Take a look at science. Take a look at what science has done for this planet. At one point in time, we thought the world was flat. Now it's round. We thought that the planet was the center of the universe. Now it's not. We have no idea how big the universe is. Pluto used to be a planet. Now it's not. You get what I'm saying. There's a lot of concepts that were created through thoughts, ideas, but forming of words. So as an infant, probably in the purest form of human existence, as an infant, when you're born, there is no understanding. All you're hearing is sounds. You don't know what any of those sounds represent. What you do have is a vision. You have sight. When you see things, you relate. When you see somebody smiling, it tends to give us kind of a joyous feeling. When we see somebody upset and stressed, we can feel how stressed they are. We know that because we have gone through it before. As an infant, if all you did was present happy thoughts, happiness every day, they wouldn't know anything different. At the same time, if you presented to that same infant stresses, anger, anxieties, then they wouldn't know any different. So there's a power behind our thoughts. The power is what makes us who we are as a human being, as a person, as a friend, as a family member, as a coworker, as a partner. What we have to do is really understand what is it that makes us off from center? Why are we even dealing with cognitive awareness? Well, we know we have a problem. We're constantly getting into fights, we get into arguments, we have no good outlook on life. Maybe you're suicidal, maybe you've chosen a path of addictions. There could be many different reasons why we are off from our center. Center meaning we have a little bit of good and a little bit of bad, but nothing's extreme. When we are off with our cognitive awareness, cognitive being thoughts, when we are off with our thoughts, we have to figure out where is it or where was it created from. Now, it can be simply put as beliefs. Our belief system is what creates our thoughts. However, we're working on just our cognitive, our thought processes. So when we look at things, just like I mentioned before, the infant, where does the infant generate its thoughts from? It generates it through experiences, through the experiences from its family or the things around it, from the puppy dog that plays with it from the comfort of the blanket that's put on it to warm it up, from the cuddling, the holding, the kissing, the caressing, the smiling, the laughter of the mother and father. So how we are raised plays a major part in our cognitive approach, our thoughts. Now, it's not the driving force. Again, the driving force of our thoughts are the, our belief system. We'll talk about that on another episode. But for right now, we're trying to understand what cognitive awareness is. How are we raised? When our parents tell us certain things, when they say that's bad, that's good, when they say do this, don't do that, that's how we develop our cognitive, our thoughts. There's also a possibility if we're off from center that we might have had an injury. We could have been a great person, beautiful human being, till we're in our teens, 20s. Then we get into a minor accident. We could have fallen downstairs, bumped our heads, gotten into a major car accident. Any sort of trauma that happens to your brain has the potential of creating a physical problem with your actual brain, which can then cause your thoughts to be different. 
There's also the possibility of birth defects coming right out of the womb, having brain restructuring because of something happening in the birthing cycle. Or it could be an addiction, like drug addictions can cause birth defects, brain damage. But any of these can be sources for our difficulty in our thoughts, in what we think and what we say, and how we behave. So how can we be more aware of what's going on? How do we know that we're having problems? It's real simple. I mean, up front, you could say if you're always having bad days, or if you're, you're having more bad days than good days, or if you have a lot of bad days, or if you have very few bad days, but when you have them, they're extremely bad. You know, it's not like you can kind of meld into a bad day and get yourself out of it. It's like you have a good five, six days, and then all of a sudden one day something simple happens and you take it to a huge degree in the negative. How do we know that we're having these problems? It's called being aware, trying to be aware, learning how to be aware, aware, recognition, recognizing when something's off, what is it that caused it? A good way to start being aware of ourselves and our thoughts is to listen to ourselves talk. As we communicate with others, that's dictating our cognitive process, our thoughts. How are we feeling emotionally will dictate a little bit of those thoughts. It will dictate how we think. If I'm not feeling happy, there's a good chance my thoughts are going to be remaining in an unhappy state. Therefore, my words become unhappy and my actions will follow along. So when we are communicating with family or friends or coworkers or even people we've never met before, it may take time, but you can actually become what I call a fly on the wall. After you have a conversation with somebody, especially if it just happened, you have the ability as a aware being or even as an unaware being, you have the ability of allowing yourself to review that conversation or at least the major parts of it or maybe even just one part of it the part that caused you the most angst or anxiety. We have the ability of rewinding everything and taking a look at it from more than one point of view. Because as we are in the middle of conversation, all we are really seeing is our own point of view. If we have the ability, and we will eventually through this process, through this cognitive awareness, we have the ability to rewind and correct. Maybe not change the past, but to prevent the past from recurring again. Meaning, if you had a conversation with somebody and you called them a jerk, you have the ability of not getting to the point where you call somebody a name, even in the hardest of times. The way we do that is the recognition, knowing when it is that we're off. When I say something and I feel something, I might say something that isn't exactly the nicest thing. So after we listen to ourselves talk and then try to look at that from a fly-on-the-wall perspective... We have the ability to look back and evaluate what we did and how we did it. We can also do something very simple. Record yourself. As you're talking, as you're thinking, as you're taking a break from work, turn your recorder on and start talking about what you're feeling this moment. Let the words flow out just without trying to dictate or control your process of choosing words. Just let them roll out. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking at progress. We're trying to progress into healing. So if you can record yourself and rewind it and then listen to your words, you're going to learn that you choose certain words. And there's a good chance that those are going to be repetitive. We call it pattern usage. That when you get angry, you tend to use a certain vocabulary. When you're happy, you tend to use a different vocabulary. So rewinding it and recording ourselves allows us to listen not only to the words, but the inflection, how we say it. If we say something with anger, things are very sharp, curt, very to the point. Matter of fact, boom, hammer it in. When we're happy, we tend to use lighter words like happy, love. This is fun. This is great. I feel wonderful. And the tone of our voice becomes a reflection of that process. Review your thoughts when you're done a conversation with somebody or a moment. Try to review your thoughts when you're alone, when you're actually thinking when you're alone. Because we all know we think about 10,000 things per minute. We are a thinking machine. So any time during the day, there's an opportunity for us to learn from our own thought patterns. What about when you just had an argument or a fight with somebody? Uncomfortable moments. Maybe the first time you meet somebody, try to review 
not only how you felt, but how your words were presented to the other person. What are some of the things you say? Are you kind when you meet somebody for the first time, or are you kind of short and uncomfortable because you don't like meeting new people? You'll be able to see the patterns. And a great place to understand this is to try and review your thoughts when you're at work. Work has a tendency to stress us out because we're not clean and clear with our thoughts. We're not clean and clear with our belief system. When we work, we're working to pay bills. We're working to pay somebody else what we've just earned. It's almost like the concept of work has the direct intention of being something we do for very little. And what we do have left becomes stuff that we need, unless we're working a very well-paying job, and then we have monies to be able to get stuff that we feel we want or need. But the concept is inside the workplace, it tends to bring our emotions to high levels, especially stress. So awareness of thinking is exactly what I've just been talking about. Being aware, that is step one of anything. It's kind of like you've heard the phrase before for alcoholics is, you got to admit that you have a problem. If you don't admit you have a problem, then you're going to fight it and the problem gets worse. Once you admit you have a problem, you've given yourself a step in the right direction. You're aware that you have a problem and you know there's a solution for it. But the question is, how do I get to that solution? Well, that's what this whole cognitive awareness is about. It's learning skills that are going to help you clear a path to a healthier, happier you. So in closing, folks, step one is just awareness. We know there's an issue. We know there's a problem with our thoughts. We know we struggle. This is a daily occurrence. It isn't like there's somebody out there that never has a tough thought to deal with. Someone can run over your foot, step on it, cut you off in traffic. Your brain creates a thought pattern. And if you don't have a good balance and understanding of your emotions, your beliefs, then your thoughts are going to kind of fall down the line of negativity. So it's up to us as individuals to learn the skills to be able to recreate or retrain our brain to be able to handle our thought patterns. My next episode is going to be where is the problem? I essentially started talking about that in this podcast. Where is the problem? It's in our head. Or is it? Or is it actually driven through our belief system? Where is the problem? It's in us. Nobody else. There is nothing outside of you that causes any damage to you, causes any pain. It's our belief system and our thought patterns that allow things to affect us. But nobody can do anything to us as far as verbal communication. Where is the problem? That'll be the next episode. I thank you very much, and I hope you stay with me, and I hope you get to learn some great skills to help you heal through your tough times. With love and hope for a better future. This is Bear. Thank you.